I have the light on? Should I not? Let's see. Maybe I think this way is better. Is it? Let's see. We'll see. Okay, guys. Should we have this light or should I turn off the light? We'll find out. All right, an impromptu session. Let's see what's going to happen. A uh, young Muslim wants to ask me questions, so we'll see. I don't know. Oh, I'm tired, guys. I know for you guys, some of you, it's afternoon, evening, right? But I am not a morning person. It takes me a long time to get up. All right. Hold on. Lord have mercy on us. I'm sure I'm about to fall asleep by then. How's everybody doing? Hey, guys. What do you think? Hey, Tony. How you doing, buddy? I know for some of you, right now, it's should be 1.30. Some of you, 12.30. But I'm not a morning person. I sleep real late. Takes me a while to get up. Now, here's what I want to ask you a question. Should I keep the light on or should I turn off here? Watch. Tell me what you think. Should it be? You, would you rather have it this way where you can highlight my features? What's up, guys? Lord to the Spirit. All right. So should I turn off the light? Hey, Lepontari, brother. This is impromptu session. We're waiting for this young man to come. He's got questions. We'll see if it's fruitful. If not, I'll open up the Q&A. So should I have the light off? Hey, Payne, how are you, man? Good to see you. Shula. Or should I have it this way? You decide. I know there's 16 second delay. Light on, light off. Light on, light on, light off. Put a one for light on. Put a two for light off. Which would you rather have? Oh, everyone liked it off? Here I come to save the day. All right, there you go. Mighty Mouse is here to stay. All right, there he is. So you okay like this? All right, Lord to the Father, says, bring your mighty name. All right, good. Welcome, everyone. Let's begin the Lord's Prayer. I'm very tired. So pray the Lord Jesus will confirm to me his will and that the Lord Jesus will transform me to do ministry in perfect submission to his will in accord with his will. For the glory of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right? So because I had, I don't know if they're trolls or not. You know, two people complaining about me being too harsh and cruel. But here's what I need. Just pray God will make it clear to me that he will confirm to me if the Lord wants me now just to ignore trolls and stop insulting people. I mean, I'm not trying to be politically correct and I don't want to change for people, for numbers, for money, for status. I want to change for the glory of Jesus Christ. And I have to be honest, I have been in ministry for too long to see that you cannot appease everyone. You cannot make everyone happy and you're not supposed to. As long as you make Jesus Christ, our Lord, happy, as long as the Holy Spirit is pleased with you, you don't grieve the Holy Spirit, and you don't shame the Father. That's all that matters. And there are a lot of people who have a wrong view of what being loving is and also about how to respond to blasphemers, idolaters, mockers, fake Christians who are wolves in sheep's clothing. They don't understand what the scriptures teach as a whole. They only have a one-sided view of how to approach people because they haven't read the totality of scriptures and understood there's, there's a time and place for everything. So because of that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray he convicts me, constrains me. He becomes our self-control, our self-restraint, our self-constraint, controlling our passions to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. I realize the hell with political correctness. And I realize the hell with what some people think the Christian approach is. As long as I'm being biblical, there is a time and place to insult people. But at the same time, I have to be careful and ask the Holy Spirit to control my flesh, crucify my flesh, that I don't go to the extreme. And I am imperfect. I am sinful. And over the years, I get more frustrated, just being honest with you guys. I have seen what this fake form of piety has done to the church. And I'm being honest. May the Lord Jesus purge my motives, cleanse my motives, cleanse and purify my conscience, May the Lord Jesus purify all of us, cleanse and wash us in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray he does that for my daughters, our loved ones, that we don't deceive ourselves and we don't do it for fame, status, 
We don't do it for money. We do it to glorify Father, Son, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. Because at the end of the day, no matter what approach you adopt, you're not going to make everyone happy. And our job is not to make people happy. It's to make our God happy, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. As long as I don't sin against our God, grieve and shame the Father, the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, I don't care if people don't like me. But at the same time, I need to be sensitive to know if the Holy Spirit wants to reel me in and rein me in and take it a lot more easier than I have been with trolls, with these effeminate cowards, with these blasphemers. I know a lot of people can't handle it when I call people dogs, salt their mothers. But that's just to give them a taste of their medicine, to teach them <clears throat> fear and respect and to shame them. Because at the end of the day, when you insult our God, mock the Lord Jesus, pervert scripture. And when you try to bully Christians or you sit in judgment of me because I don't do it your way, you need to be taught a lesson and you need to be humble <clears throat> because there's a lot of Christians who have fake piety, fake humility, fake humbleness, which is just as evil as pride. And may God destroy our pride, our arrogance, our ego, May the Holy Spirit destroy our fake piety, our fake humility, and fake humbleness. But still, when the Holy Spirit constrains me and reels me in, reigns me, His will be done. He owns me. He owns us. We trust in Him. So I just want to be sensitive. I don't care what people think, but at the same time, I want to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. Because I'm not going to be <clears throat> everyone's cup of tea. I'm not going to make everyone happy, and I don't want to. As long as I try to avoid being as unnecessarily offensive without compromising and offending and humiliating those who deserve to be humiliated within God's will, that's all that matters. But again, pray for me because I need to just know if the Spirit is telling me to rein myself in. If so, His will be done. He owns me. He owns us. His will be done for the glory of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. So we're just waiting <clears throat> for the Muslim to call, uh, come in. So I... I I'm just letting you know, the more I do ministry, the more frustrated I become, the more impatient I become, the more intolerable I become towards people who think they're Christian, think they're pious, but they're not because they don't know scripture. May God destroy my pride and arrogance. I don't want to be the thing I hate. My fear is to become the thing I hate. My fear is to end up like James White. And I'm not better than that man. I am I know I deserve judgment like he does. It is the truth. I speak the truth. By the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> if God gives me what I deserve, I would deserve to be destroyed because of my wicked, evil thoughts, desires, my flesh. This is why we cry out to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Give us your grace, your mercy, <clears throat> your love and compassion. Do not give us what we deserve. So I don't want to be the thing I hate. I don't want to end up like James White. Because James White has, again, I'm not slandering. He's become disgusting. May God save me from that. May he not hand me over and give me a taste of my own medicine. I pray the Lord has mercy on all of us, convicts James White, but I don't know. The more I see him, the more I see his heart. And I don't want to be hardened against God. I don't want to resist the Spirit. May that never happen. I want the Holy Spirit to own me and fill me and possess me for the glory of Jesus Christ. And heal me from the things that disgust the Spirit. I'm not perfect. And there are times in which I sin in my anger. I'm not perfect, but to be honest, not to justify it, we have too many people who are effeminate, sissified, and think it's never right to rebuke and insult someone. And that's not true. We got too many of those. We do not have enough people who are willing to walk like the prophets and the apostles and the church fathers. Guys, read the scriptures. Look at the lives of the church fathers. They were not People who are effeminate and sissified, they would insult, ridicule, <clears throat> humiliate, and even come to physical blows. Many of the Christians ended up in violent physical altercations. Did you know this? Guys here, do me a favor. Google the Council of Nicaea. Chef Google is the greatest scholar ever lived. And we're going to begin in the Lord's Prayer. Google the 318 bishops that came. Did you know that 302 of them, 302 of them had injuries because it became a bloodbath during the time of Nicaea? 
Trinitarians and Arians were not just arguing. They were coming to physical blows and maiming each other. They say 302 out of their 318 bishops had injuries, right? Some had eyes that were maimed, body parts that were maimed, maimed, M-A-I-M-E-D. Holy Spirit, save me from stammering, from stuttering, from my list. Save me from error. Correct me on the spot. Save me from sin and hate sin. And perfect the gifts you give me. Recall of every jot to the poor scripture. Perfectly recalling. Destroy all forgetfulness and perfect exegesis for the glory of the Father, Son, and Spirit. So these men were not your typical pastors of today. They were not. They were not timid. They were not weak. They would insult and ridicule. And they would use vulgar language. You find in scriptures. And may God constrain me and destroy my pride and arrogance and flesh. Not to justify my sin, but hate my sin. But in scriptures you find them using vulgar language. The reason why you may not see that is because of your translation. The reason why you don't see that is because of your translation. Sometimes the English translations have to translate in a way where the very vulgar or graphic language of Scripture does not come out. I'm not exaggerating. It's in Scripture. So pray for me. I don't want to change for fame, status, for money. May God destroy our pride, arrogance, and ego. I keep saying that. May God heal me, make us whole, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically. May the Lord never allow us to prostitute ourselves for more numbers, fame, or money. May we be men and women of integrity, do it for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, not for the praise of men. Hold on, G. You see that comment right there? See, this is why people like you make me want to cuss you out. This is why I want to cuss you out. I want to insult you. You see, this is what I mean by fake piety. You see? See this? This is what I mean by fake piety. This is what I mean by these fake wicked maggots who think they're pious. Do what Jesus would do, not the prophets. In other words, when the prophets filled with the Holy Spirit speak the way they do when they're filled with the Holy Spirit, let's ignore them because it's not Jesus speaking through them. See? See that? Did you guys catch it? You see, now I'm constraining myself from insulting this guy. You see, right when I'm talking, Satan sends one of his dogs to manifest. So when Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ, who gives a damn about the apostles and the prophets? Because Jesus wasn't speaking in and through them. See, what do you do with Christians like this who think they're Christians when they're dangerous? You see, he just illustrated my point perfectly, perfectly illustrated my point. And if I show him what Jesus did to people, and how Jesus insulted people, and how Jesus whipped people, right? Now look at this dog. Now, now, this man is a dog right here. Now, can I? Would I be justified insulting this spiritual dog, son of a spiritual dog, a spiritual prostitute? Would I be justified insulting this man? Say, he is a perfect illustration of what I just said. He perfectly confirms my point, and I think. It's, a, it's God's timing. God's timing. You see? You see what I just... Uh, he just... Did he not confirm what I just said? Did he not just confirm what I just said about people who are fake, who think they're spiritual and humble? They're not. They're proud and arrogant and wicked and disgusting and filled with Satan. And yet they're dangerous because they claim to be Christian. And I'm waiting for the Muslim man to come on, by the way. So I'm just waiting. He's waiting too because he has to wait where he's alone. You see, he just illustrated what I just said. See, it's sad, man. Anyway, remember this. You're not going to make everyone happy. You're not going to appease everyone. And that's not your job. Amen, Shula. I took that as confirmation. That's not your job to appease people. Your job is to make sure you're doing everything you can to make your God happy, Jesus happy. And if you know that you're making the spirit happy and are submitting, who gives a damn what people think of you, right? But then we have to be discerning because the Holy Spirit does speak through the members of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you have to discern whether this person is a member of Christ, his body, and whether he or she is mature. 
because you have a lot of babes in the faith who are not spiritually mature, who don't have discernment. So you have to be careful. Okay, he's coming on. You with me there? You have to be careful. You have to be discerning to know this person is mature. He walks with the Lord. All right, this guy's thumbs down. We're out. Here we go. All right, one second, buddy. He knows the Lord, and I can take that into consideration when he gives me advice or she gives me advice. Okay. One second. Yes, Francis, you can come up after this. I'm going to open up the Q&A. So here you go. So there you go. Father, Son, and Spirit, in mighty name. Let's begin the Lord's Prayer and see if he's going to show up. He said he's coming on. Name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, strengthen my throat, my heart, my arteries, my lungs, my chest with the health I need. And give me the discipline to stay healthy and fit and use my health to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and serve the church. Come to the forefront. Control us. Constrain us. And do that for our loved ones and my daughters. And purge us in your purifying fire. Feed us the holy flesh of Jesus Christ and give us the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for our nourishment, for our healing, our salvation, redemption, and protection. And convict this Muslim. I pray he is sincere and you open his heart and bring him to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and rebuke Satan, destroy all distractions, and perfect my recall of Scripture and give us the power to obey your word for the glory of the Father, Son, and Spirit in Jesus' name. Okay, we're waiting for him. He said he's coming on. If not, we have that convert, Francis, wants to ask a question. I'll open up to Q&A. This is an impromptu session, so I haven't fully woke up. I'm not a morning person, guys. I sleep late. So are you sure you like this? Okay, one more time. With or without the light? Let's see. This is without the light. Now let's see with the light. With or without? Now you see me in color. See, now you can see how handsome I am, how skinny I am. May the Lord Jesus help me to keep the weight off. <laughs> with or without the light? Yeah, so I think he's a troll, yeah. Yeah, I think he's a troll. Yeah, the the reason why you can't come on is because you've been blocked. That means you've been on before, and I blocked you. So nice try, though. So now I'm going to block you. You can't come on because you've been blocked. But let me see. One more second. Hold on. Maybe not. All right. So let's try it again. See, here's another guy. See, now what do you do with this guy here? See, here's another guy who thinks he knows the Bible, you see? Now, what do you want me to say to him? Who misquotes Romans 12, 19, pits scripture against scripture, has Paul contradicting himself, all because he thinks he's a Christian who knows the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, now I'm being nice. What do I say to this guy here? All right, now try it again. You don't have to authenticate. Let's see if you're not a troll. Because usually, if you've been a troll, I block you, you can't come back on. Okay, now, what do I say to this guy here? Here's another guy that just quoted Paul out of context. Because he thinks Paul only wrote Romans chapter 12 or verse 19. He doesn't read what Paul wrote in the entirety of his letters by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. To let scripture interpret scripture to understand what this means and doesn't mean. Now, what do you do with this, these kind of people that think they know the Bible? And they're dangerous because they butcher scripture like Satan does. And yet they're naive and don't see how dangerous they are. Now, what do I say to this guy? What do I say to this guy? Right? Who thinks he's being pious and being Christ-like and imitating Paul. Butchering Paul out of context. No, you didn't post this for me to educate. Because posting this for me to educate, say, hey, brother, how do you explain this verse? See? 
And you wonder why I have no more patience, but pray God will constrain me that I finish the race with integrity and holiness and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, uh, let's see if he's going to come on. We're waiting. May I not sin against the Lord, but, you know, anyway. let me now get you the link. Now, Francis, if you want to come ask me questions until the Muslim shows up, here it is. Come and ask me questions. Instead of me shutting down, uh, I explain it, Jules, by going John 18, verses 22 to 23. Have you read John 18, 22 to 23, Jules? When Jesus got smacked by the high priest servant, he didn't turn the other cheek. Did you know that? Jules, did you know this? The same Lord Jesus that you're quoting out of context to misunderstand his point is the same Lord Jesus who in John 18, 22 to 23, when he got smacked, he didn't turn the other cheek. He said, if I spoken the truth, why do you strike me? So unless John contradicts Matthew or Jesus contradicts himself, you see why you're dangerous too, Jules? That you don't know scripture as much as you think and may God destroy pride and arrogance, destroy my pride and constrain us and fill us with the Holy Spirit. All right. So there's the link if you guys want to come and ask me questions. I don't know if the Muslim baby will show up. Okay. Did you catch that, Jules? Go to John 18, 22 to 23. Figure it out. I'm not going to answer it right now. Figure it out. Go, Jules. Can you first read John 18, 22, 23 and say, Sam, you're right. When Jesus got smacked, he did not turn the other cheek. Or in Acts 23, verses 1 to 5, when Paul was about to get smacked, for talking back to the high priest, he didn't turn the other cheek. He sarcastically and mockingly so I'm sorry. I didn't know because it says you are not to talk back to the leader of your people. Mocking. All right. So hold on, Francis. I'm going to bring you up in a minute. Q&A, guys, until the Muslim shows up. If he doesn't show up, I'm just going to take questions. So, Jules, can you read that first? So we got Funky Polak. Now, see, we got trolls showing up already. Funky Pollock, that name, you better go. All right. What's up, brother? Hi there. How are you? Uh, how are you doing, brother? Go ahead. Very well. Thank you. God bless. And you? Oh, we're, we survive by the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, Idol, how are you, brother? Idol killer. Lord bless you. And this young man was a former Muslim, guys. He's now trying to give his life to Lord Jesus Christ fully. May we all do that. What's up, young man? Go ahead. Amen. By the way, when I say uh, amen for you. Thank you. So, um, before you well, ask me, how old are you? I am, I'm 32. Man, I'm old enough to be your dad. I'm 51. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Good to see you, Siri. Apologetic shout out to our brother, Siri. He's a brother in the Lord who does ministry. Support him. Go to his channel, Siri Apologetics. Go ahead, brother. Ask your question. Um, so I've got, I've got a few questions. So I was speaking in regards to, um, I, which I messaged you recently, I went to a Catholic church. And have enrolled myself into uh, this course of right of Christian initiation for ad of adults. Yes, uh, R I uh, R C I A. That's right. That's right. Uh, Got to yeah. kill this mosquito. Go ahead, brother. Hold on. I'm killing this mosquito. So, so I've I've uh, I've spoken to the, I've spoken to the, the father there uh, in regards to this, and it's been really helpful. Uh, but then I also would call it some, some people also uh, start telling me uh, in regards to, oh, uh, why Catholicism, this and this and this. Someone wants it again? I can hear that. Uh, someone, someone's tried, uh, someone tried battling with me. Oh, why are you trying to go into Catholicism? You know it is unbiblical. Like they pray to saints. So my question to you that is... Argument, that argument. Yeah, but it's not, like I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really listening to them, but I am. I am trying to understand their point of view, but I'm... But I'm gonna do what I know the Holy Spirit is gonna guide me into. Yeah. So I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not gonna let my let them persuade me into anything else. But the thing is, they say that do uh, that. Why do we pray to saints? Because right now they're dead, but they're gonna be they they Jesus is gonna like let. Who said they're dead? So the, these people, uh, the Protestants and the evangelists. Uh, who said they're dead? Three... I'm listening to you, brother. Go ahead. I'm just saying, who said they're dead? Number one. Uh, so it's people in my people in the old church that I've been. I've been yeah, to. But I don't care saying... what they think. Where do they get that they're dead? I just want to see. So guys, pray. I got a flat. Sorry, brother. I'm vain. May God destroy my pride. <laughs> these love handles. No matter how much I try to lose weight. Is that okay? So who said they're dead? Did Jesus say they're dead? Uh, nope. They don't. They, Jesus never said that because. Okay, uh, so when when someone tells me. They're dead. I say, so you blaspheming Jesus Christ? Hmm. 
you asked him, so are you blaspheming Jesus Christ? Why? Right. Jesus said, those who believe in him cannot die, they live. You said they're dead. So are you blaspheming Jesus Christ or saying Jesus Christ is a liar? Here, mm. open up your Bible. Go to Luke 20, 37 to 38. Yeah, so see these? This is, again, now, you hear what the brother said? Francis just said. There are Christians who think they know the Lord, who think they're pious and being spiritual, but because they're ignorant, they're biblically dangerous, and they end up blaspheming Jesus Christ, though that's not their intention. As, Amen, so brother, what, I see an idol killer who's still a Protestant who loves the Eastern Catholic uh, Orthodox Church, by the way. Idol killer loves the Eastern Orthodox Church. He's open to becoming Eastern Orthodox. Did you guys know that? He loves the Eastern Orthodox Church and he's open. He's studying. So praise the spirit will convince him to become Eastern Orthodox. Even as a Protestant, he sees they're alive. See, that's idol killer. Now, go to Luke 20, 37, 38. 23, 27, 28. Chapter yeah. 20, verse 37, 38. 20. What does it say? A Muslim, connect your device, brother, and humanity. It's not connected, so I can't bring you up if it's not connected. So the Muslim man is here. So, brother, you're going to stick around, too, because I'm going to try to answer his questions. I'm going to go uh, read Luke 20, so 37, 38. Uh, 37, 38. Yes. Right. Uh, but in the children of the resurrection, uh, no, the, but in the account of the burning bush, even Moses showed that the dead rise, for he calls the Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. 38. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. So why did they say he's dead? Oh. Or they're dead, or she's dead. When Jesus said, no, none of them are dead. They're all alive. So are they blaspheming Jesus? Are they saying Jesus is a liar? They know more than Jesus? Uh, so that this is a blaspheme, actually. So yeah. you're right. Um, wow. Okay. Because, because the thing is, a lot of people are saying, like, oh, they they this and they this and they this. Like, why, why do we need to pray this? And I'm like, but Jesus tells me uh, in Bible, he tells about them being the 12 thrones in heaven. And then the 12 leaders and tri of yeah. tribes of Israel. Okay, you keep so going to that passage, which means, my brother Francis, you didn't go, go to my series on veneration of the saints. No, I, I, I'm, going, I'm going through uh, bit by bit. I've got a lot to learn. So yeah, I've got so all smoke. the questions written that I'm writing down bit by bit when I'm reading and understanding. That's what I'm yeah. doing right now. That's what I'm saying. Slowly, you'll get to an the answer to these because mm -hmm. it's not just Matthew 19, 28. They'll sit on 12 thrones because that they'll tell you it's in the re regeneration of the age to come that's when jesus returns no you need to show passages where they're alive right now mm. alive right now with the lord in heaven so here you saw jesus said they're not dead they're alive so why do they say they're dead now i want you to go to john chapter 8 okay i want you to read for me 49 to 51 john chapter 8 Yep, exactly, brother. Yeah, exactly. See, I don't kill her even gets it. John 8, 49 mm -hmm. to 51. See what our Lord says, and then you're going to see the Jewish response. First read that. Muslim, I'm bringing, about to bring you up, and we'll answer your questions. Go ahead. Uh, John uh, 8, 49 to 51. If I repeat myself, to, time, I'll 51. hang myself my shoestrings. All right. I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Very truly, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. Okay, but they said Jesus is lying, right? <laughs> they said Jesus uh, said they never see that, but no, they're telling no, they are dead. Okay, now. Read their reaction in 52 and 53. Read their reaction. As this they, as this they exclaimed, uh, now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are oh, you so see? They're like, wait, the prophets and Abraham died. You're saying whoever believes in you does not die. Who do you make yourself out to be? Are you greater... Than our father Abraham? 
So they got what Jesus meant. All who believe in Jesus Christ our Lord can never die. They're still alive, though their bodies return to the dust. Jesus said, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are not dead. They're alive. So when the Protestant tells me they're dead, either they are ignorant, which they are, or they're blaspheming Jesus Christ, saying Jesus doesn't know what he's talking about. So you see, this is why, again, it perfectly illustrates my point. There are people who think they're pious and humble and doing God a favor, but they end up blaspheming and insulting the Lord because they're ignorant and dangerous. Now, before you move on, let me bring up this Muslim so you can sit back and listen. Yeah, Rob, can we help you? Muslim, you here? Hello. Yeah, speak a little louder. In the mic. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah, what's up? Nothing. We can't hear you, man. If you're going to be this slow, I'm going to have to get rid of you. So, we're going to refuse. Speak, yeah, speak louder in the microphone. Guys, I have to do this because some people come on and flash videos, pornographic images. So I have to be careful. Speak. Can you hear me? Not too good. What is it? I don't know. I might. Okay. okay, so what is it now? Talk to me. What do you need? Refute the video. I can't hear a word you're saying. How can I refute when I don't know what the heck you're talking about? Refute what? The video. What video? I don't know what video you're talking about. Cypher I didn't watch your video. Who? Cypher talk. Cypher talk. Who? Cypher talk. Science and what? You know the guy I sent you. I didn't watch him, so you got to remind me. I don't watch videos. What is it? Okay, so wait, wait. Who is the guy you want me to refute? Cypher talk. You're, I'm about to block you because your mic is just as daif as the Quran. Who? Saif Salt. Yeah, Francis, do you even know what this guy's saying? Nope. Colin just had a bit. Yeah. I'm going to give you one more chance to be clear. I'm going to send you to Mecca. What is it? Yeah. Okay. When you get to Mecca, maybe kiss the black stone. Maybe it'll remove <laughs> your sense because we can't hear you. So let me get out of here. You want me to throw you out because you're not making sense. Saif talk? Who's Saif talk? What did he say you want me to refute? Tell me what his argument is. Yeah, you got it. How did you hear him, Orthodox Christus? I couldn't hear him because he put it in the private chat. What's his argument so I can demolish it? What did Saif talk say? Matthew. He what? Matthew. Giati. Giati. I'm about to insult you and cuss you out. You know that, right? But I'm trying to be a nice guy. <laughs> I'm going to insult you, GIT, especially if you think you're a Christian and you're decked up with uh, 10, 10 gallons of makeup. No amount of makeup is going to make you look pretty. So don't deceive yourself, okay? You could put 20 pounds of makeup and you're going to still look like a porker. Get out of here, you Jezebel, okay? All right. Let's just take it easy, man. Take it easy. Okay, what did he say? What did Saif Talk say? Take it easy. Francis, are you laughing, right? What did he say, what did he say about Matthew? Muslim, what did he say about Matthew? Oh my goodness. Okay, bye bye, Muslim. Okay, we got another guy. Hold on, let's say now. Don't go. Oh. What is it, student? Student, what is it? According to the Bible, Jesus is not. What happened? Where, where'd you go? Why'd you run? According to the Bible, I did it. You don't even know the Bible, man. All right. These guys, one more is one. Let me give this guy another chance. Okay, what did Saif Talk say, Muslim? That, uh, can you hear me? No, not really. But what did Saif Talk say about Matthew, man? It says that you can blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Ah, come on, man. That argument is so pathetic. It makes Saif look like... <clears throat> He needs to get a gender operation because he looks like a long-haired sissy. Okay. Matthew 12, 31, 32. So does Saif, that stone licker, believe the Holy Spirit is God? No, he says that. No, you're not answering my question. I'm going to bury Saif. Okay. Since, 
blaspheming the Holy Spirit is the unforgivable sin, meaning that's the one sin God will never forgive. If the Holy Spirit is not God, how do you commit the unforgivable sin against the Holy Spirit? Because you believe he's Gabriel. So do you now admit that according to Jesus, the Holy Spirit is God? No, do wait. you admit? Because he quoted Matthew 12, 31, 32. Yes. If you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you'll never be forgiven, which means he must be God Almighty because you can only commit the unforg unforgivable sin against God. So Jesus says, when you sin against the Holy Spirit, that's unforgivable, which means the Holy Spirit must be God, not Gabriel. Do you agree with Jesus? Yes, but let me make my point. Wait, wait, say it again. You said yes? That means you're no longer Muslim. Because no, in Islam, no. the Holy Spirit is Gabriel. I know, but let me make my but point. First, I'm going to bury the argument. Don't be scared. So I want you to say, we want to hear your mouth. Yes, Jesus is right. Muhammad is wrong. It's Wait, not no, as well. no. The Holy Spirit is God, not Gabriel. Say that. No, no, no. I didn't say that. No, say it. No, no, no. You're not going to run. It, no, 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 no. You quoted Matthew 12, 12, 31, 32. Yes, but you can. I want you to admit. I want, shh, I'm going to send you to Mecca. I want you to admit. Since Jesus said you cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit because you'll never be forgiven. That means the Holy Spirit must be God because you can only commit the unforgivable sin against God. Which means Islam is wrong. Muhammad is an antichrist in hell because Holy Spirit is not Gabriel. Say that. No. So you, you're you saying Jesus is wrong? Why you think that's wrong? Is Jesus you? wrong? Well, I don't believe in the Bible. Why are you asking? Oh, so then you're quoting the Bible. So that means if but, I follow the Bible, I have to say Muhammad is in hell because but, I believe in the Bible. Believe, so do you, you agree? Believe. I'm going to get to your point. Be patient before I send you to Mecca. So now do you agree as Christians who believe in Matthew, we must now reject Muhammad as a son of the Satan, son of the devil, because what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit, because Muhammad didn't agree. So as a Christian, do you agree now? I have a right to say Muhammad is in hell. He's a son of the devil because he contradicts what Jesus said in Matthew. You as a Christian, yes. Yes, he says that, guys. He admits we have every right to say Muhammad is in hell. Okay, now. So now we established, according to Jesus and Matthew, according to Sight, that effeminate, long-haired, queer bait, the Holy Spirit is God Almighty. Because to offend the Holy Spirit, blasphemy the Holy Spirit, is to commit the unforgivable sin. You can only commit the unforgivable sin against, the, against God Almighty, not a creature. So if you commit the unforgivable sin against the Holy Spirit... That means the Holy Spirit is God. So that's number one. Thank you. Number two, you just admit that if I'm a Christian, if I follow Jesus, then I have to believe Muhammad is a son of the devil burning in hell because he contradicts what Jesus said in Matthew. Thank you for helping me prove those two points. Now, point number three, if that long-haired freak, that Muslim freak had read Matthew 12, 31, 32 carefully, he would have seen that Jesus said, blasphemies against the son of man will be forgiven but because he's a long-haired freak who doesn't kiss the black stone enough he doesn't understand what jesus meant because when jesus is standing before you as a man all you see is a man and you don't recognize he's god that's your problem as muslims because you see a man you don't recognize he's god which is why you end up mocking us christians saying oh your god came out of a woman's cavity so what jesus is saying is I'll even tolerate and accept and forgive when people insult me, the son of man. Because I understand all you see is a man and you don't see that I'm God. So that when I speak as God, your first reaction is to get offended and insult me. So in my patience, I will tolerate and forgive you. But when the Holy Spirit does miracles to confirm that I'm more than a man and I'm God, and then you insult the Holy Spirit, your only connection to me. Because it's the Spirit who has to convince you that I'm God. But when you grieve the Spirit, you have no more hope of believing who I am. Now you've committed an imparable sin. You see how easy it is to, to bury your long-haired freak Mohammedan stone kisser? <laughs> What's your next question? My next question is Romans chapter 6, verse 22. Romans chapter what? Chapter you don't want to quote Paul, right? The same Paul who says Jesus is God overall? No, no. Chapter 6, verse 22. Romans chapter who? Chapter 6. Verse what? 
Twenty-two. What, what about Romans six twenty-two? Well, it says that you are slaves of God. I can't even understand. A, are you reciting Quran? Is that why I can't understand you? It says you are slave of God. Okay. And you mean the same Paul who says we're also sons of God? Here. Wait, wait. Let me now expose you. You quoted Romans 6, 22. It says we're the slaves of God, but he says that God is our father. We are his sons. Mm -hmm. So why didn't you quote Romans 8, 14 and 17 here? Same Paul, same Romans. So are you a slave of God the father? And are you the father's son according to Paul that you just misquoted? Here, Romans 8, 14 and 17. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So guys, he quotes where Paul says you're not a slave of sin. You're a slave of God and righteousness. The same Paul who says that God that you serve is your father and you are his sons and daughters. Here, Romans 8, 14 and 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So are you a son of Allah? No. Say it again. No. Wait, guys. He's now 0 for 2. He just said, I'm not a son of Allah, but he quotes Paul who says we are slaves of God and holiness, not sin. And the God that we serve is our father. We are his sons. But he says he's not the son of Allah. So according to Paul, you're Allah, Satan. Do you agree now? No. Do you agree? You quoted Paul. Yeah. I, oh, so he I, agrees. I, I Allah, quoted, Satan. Quoted, yes. Guys, say, I I see you. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> Guys, I go, do you agree? He goes, yes. He agrees with Paul. Allah, Satan. I love the Quran. Al Masihu Akbar! Al Masihu Akbar! So, why are you a Muslim? Why are you a Muslim? Hello? Why are you a Muslim? You just admit Allah the Quran is Satan, and Muhammad is the son of Satan, according to Paul and I didn't Jesus. Admit that. What? I didn't admit that. Yes, you did. I said, do you agree? That Allah the Quran is Satan because he's not God the Father. You go, yes. No, I said I quoted Paul. So why don't you stop quoting Paul and Jesus? The Bible is your enemy so that long-haired freak, he doesn't know. He's not intelligent. He's going to embarrass you. This is why he won't debate me. So why are you using his arguments? You see, he's embarrassing you. Why don't you stop using his arguments? Do you agree you shouldn't use his arguments because he's a joke? Because he just set you up to be humiliated. See, the long-haired freak, Mohammedan freak, with a mustache, which he's not supposed to, he's supposed to have a beard, sunnah. He just gave you arguments that embarrassed you because that coward won't discuss with me so I can embarrass him. So why do you trust him? Because he just made you a joke. Why do you trust his arguments? He you gave you two arguments that buried him and exposed your religion. So why don't we stop and just listen to the rest of the session? What do you think? Let me deal with Francis because he's going to embarrass you. Every argument he's going to use, he's going to humiliate you because he's a joke. He's an idiot. He's not intelligent. He's a long-haired freak. He should be now one of these swirling dervishes in India, right? Smoking hookah because that's what he's good for. You with me there? You agree now, Muslim? Do you now want to just sit back and listen? Okay? Okay. All right, buddy. So keep listening. May God bring you to the truth and save you from Muhammad in Jesus' name. So take care, buddy. Amen. All right, there you go. It's that guy, Saif You know what I'm talking about? The guy with the long hair, the long hair freak, Muhammadan, who's got this weird-looking Charlie Chaplin mustache with that really <laughs> screechy voice. Sounds like a screech from the pit of hell. Right. The guy is so stupid. He's using arguments that he, he thinks we have no answers for. And these Muslims trust him and he ends up getting them embarrassed. All right, brother, let's continue. Yes. We got um, someone saying Allah is Satan. We got someone in the back saying Allah is Satan. All right. Allah is Satan. Hold on. I'll bring you up in a minute. Allah the Quran. But go ahead, brother. Right. Um, so a lot of people say um, in regards to I don't know who allowed this or what what your explanation is going to be. So they are saying uh, some so some questions come into mind in regards to when Jesus uh, Christ talks about uh, no one should take an oath 
uh, on him or like, you know, just say yes or just say no. But don't talk in regards to like, don't uh, don't bring on bring, uh, bring up oaths and stuff. Don't bring up and the, uh, don't 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 uh, don't take oaths on things. Right. Mm -hmm. So don't uh, like let your yes be yes and no be no. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but then why the Holy Bible is used in courts to take an oath these days? That's a good question, because the, what they do in court doesn't mean that they have God's approval. But so he's asking, why is it when you go to uh, court in America, they have you swear on the Holy Bible? Good question. I wouldn't know. Why did they do that? <clears throat> but as far as when Jesus says, let your yes be yes and no be no, mm -hmm. anything beyond that is of Satan. You'll find in Matthew 5 and James himself or yeah. Yaakov. Confirms that. Now, here is a problem, though. Did our Lord literally mean, do not swear by God, swear by heaven, or swear by earth? Or is this what we call hyperbole? Now, let me break that down. Let me explain what I mean. In the scriptures, and he's referring to Matthew 5, if you read, <clears throat> from 33 onward. Matthew 5, 33 onward. There our Lord speaks about, don't swear by heaven because that's god's throne or the earth it's his footstool let your yes be yes no be no anything mm -hmm. beyond that is of the evil one right okay that's so this is what you're referring to matthew 5 33 onward <clears throat> now the question is this did our lord mean that literally or is this hyperbole what do i mean by hyperbole this is where the bible needs to be understood and interpreted by people qualified, approved by the Spirit. And, and I'm not saying I am. I hope I am. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm one of them. I hope I, I am. I hope I'm not deceived. Because there are times in which Jesus will speak what they call hyperbole, an exaggerated form of speech. You know, it's like if I say today, man, the whole world is after me. That's hyperbole. The world is not after me. So in every language, you have what's called hyperbole, hyperbolic, where you exaggerate to make a point, right? You exaggerate to make a point. So another example is if you go to Mark 9, 43, 48, if your eye causes you to pluck it out, hmm. did he mean that literally? Or this is also what we call hyperbole. hyperbole. You know, he's exaggerating the speech, meaning take drastic measures to make sure you avoid sin at all costs. Well, hmm. that's... That's the point. The point is, when do you know when the Lord is speaking literally, meaning that he wants you to apply his instruction <laughs> as understood, as is the way he says it, or he's using what we call a parable, or he's using an allegory, or he's using a symbol, or a metaphor, or hyperbole. That's where we have to be careful how we study the scriptures. Why do I say that? Because the same Bible in the New Testament, you have followers of Christ and the Lord himself, the Lord himself in Revelation 10, swearing by him who lives forever. Revelation 10 verses 1 to 6. If you go to Revelation 10 verse 1 to 6, there, that's Jesus, the angel of the Lord. Jesus appears there as the angel of the Lord. That's him, the angel of the Lord, who was in the pillar of cloud, pillar of fire, down with Moses. That's him appearing. And he lifted up his right hand and he swore by him who lose forever, ever. So Jesus is swearing by the Father. Revelation, um, Revelation 10, verse 1 to 6, if you want to read it. Revelation 10. Verse 1 to 6. Revelation 10. You see my point? Hey, Wasim, what's up, brother? If I'm a saint, then you are. The ninth archangel, Wasim. God bless you and your lovely wife and family. Wasim Hermes. Wasa Wasi. At least that Muslim was humble enough to accept the fact that, yeah, this guy, the long-haired freak, was misleading him to get embarrassed. So, Muslim, may God open your heart to the truth. Okay, now, uh, if you go to Revelation 10, 1 to 6. Yep, Revelation 10, uh, 1 to 6. 1 to 6, sir. Read it. Yep. Then I, uh, then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. The he mighty was, angel uh, is Jesus. That's Jesus appearing as the angel of the Lord. Go ahead. Uh, he was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun. Uh, his, and his, um, above his head, 
uh, his face was like the sun, and his legs were like fiery pillars. Now, if you guys he don't know the analogy, see, this is why John assumes you know your Hebrew Bible. He's just describing the angel as God and as the angel of the Exodus. Why? Cloud covering his head. Well, God appeared in the cloud. A rainbow. God appears as a rainbow in Revelation 4. His face shone like the sun, right? That's the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 17, verse 2, in Revelation 1, 16. May the Lord give me proof of perfect recall. I very jot to the poor scripture. And then it says his, his legs were fiery pillars. That's the pillar of fire by night. So he's describing this one as God, the angel of God, who is Jesus. But keep going. He was holding a little scroll, which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. And he gave a shout. He gave a loud shout like a roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven uh, thunders, uh, when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven say, "Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down." All the way to six. The, yeah. Then the angel uh, I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven, and he swore by him who lives forever and ever. Well, Jesus, our Lord, swore by the Father who lives forever and ever. Who created the heavens and the, all that is in them. So did the he swear earth. by him? Yes. So, uh, but I thought the Lord says, do not swear. Just say yes and just say no. You see it? Yeah. Now go to Romans 1 verse 9. And see Paul swearing by God that he speaks the truth. Romans. 1 verse 9. So, guys, you see how the Lord Jesus is swearing by the Father in Revelation 10? Because that's the mighty angel, the mighty God, the angel of the Lord, who is God. The one who appeared in pillar of cloud, pillar of fire, time of Moses. That's Jesus appearing. Just like in Revelation, appears as the Ancient of Days, the Son of Man. He appears as the Lamb. He appears as a lion. He takes these various forms and images so that he can reveal something about his character, nature, and his function. Nicholas, so, pay attention, brother. That's not my job to save anyone. It's the Holy Spirit who's almighty over all of the Quran. Don't be so weak in faith. The Holy Spirit is almighty. And because he's almighty, he's greater than all of the Quran. By the way, Lydia, thank you for noticing that. I just uploaded a clip. Lydia noticed that yesterday an orb came from somewhere by my neck, around my neck, and shot through the screen after I said in Jesus' name. I just posted it, and I'll show it, show it to you. She noticed it. Now, this is the second time this happened. Uh, several months ago, someone noticed as I was speaking, uh, an, a light orb went over my head. It came from here and went over my head. This is the second time we've seen something manifest. Now, I pray we don't make it more than what it is. If it's nothing spiritual, the Lord forgive us. But it sure seems like this is some... Spiritual activity, all glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. So, but now, brother, Romans 1, 9, what does Paul say? Um, Romans 1, uh, verse 9. Uh, God, whom I serve in spirit, uh, in my spirit, in preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness. Wait, he swore by God, God, God is my witness? Yes. Okay, now, guys, if you're listening to his question, if you read Matthew 5, 33, onward. Start from 33, read onward about oaths. Yes, be yes, no, be no. And anything beyond is the evil one. If you take it literally that you only say yes and no, and you can never swear by God, then you have Jesus Christ, our Lord, as the angel in Revelation 10, swearing by God, violating his own teaching. Well, then someone will say, well, he's not talking about him. He's talking about human disciples who live in a fallen world. They shouldn't swear. Okay, but then Paul, who's a true servant of the Lord, who had the right hand of fellowship by the apostles, confirming that the Lord Jesus appeared to him and confirmed him as an apostle, he's swearing by God. So do we have a contradiction? Well, if we understand the Lord to speaking to be speaking literally, then we do have attention. But if we understand the Lord speaking hyperbolically, hyperbole, 
exaggerate form of speech. There is no contradiction. So you guys want me to explain to you what it means if, if the Lord was speaking hyperbolically, hyperbole, exaggerate form of speech? I know you want me to explain that to you, right? <laughs> you want me to explain that to you, right? Yep, please. Okay. Why would he be speaking hyperbole? If it's not literal, literally just say yes, yes, no, no. Never swear by God. That's not what he meant. That would be what we call the plain meaning of the text. That on a surface level, that's what it seems like he's saying. But when we dig deeper and ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate us, to bring out the meat, no. The plain reading, right? The surface reading is not the literal meaning. The literal meaning is hyperbole. Meaning, he's exaggerating. He's using exaggerated form of speech. You guys with me in the comment section or you're asleep? Because I want you to learn how to interpret this text and not interpret it. If he's speaking hyperbole, mm -hmm. meaning he's not literally saying you can't swear by God. Why then would he be speaking hyperbolically? Because the Lord is talking about curing, curing your desperate, wicked, sinful inclinations and struggles. What do I mean? Just like in Matthew 6, if you read verses 1 all the way to 7, the Lord talks about hypocrites and how to cure yourself of being a hypocrite. Hypocrites and how to cure yourself from being a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. If you're a hypocrite and you love attention and the praise of men, so you pray in front of men so they can praise you, or you fast in front of men so they can praise you, and you know that's what you're doing, and you know this is a sin that disgusts God because you're a hypocrite, then from now on, do not pray publicly and do not let people know you're fasting. Do it in secret until God cures your heart so you know your motives are right. Is it, um, so, so this verse actually correlates to the hypocrisy of the Pharisees then because of all their shows and like, yes, like, he was like, the, Muslim, like the Muslims he says. Basically. Yeah, he was attacking them. But he's not saying that people who pray publicly, they're all hypocrites. That's not what he's saying because he encourages public prayer, public worship. He encourages fasting together. So what is he doing? Now, let me explain again. I hope you're listening. I hope all of you are listening. Holy Spirit, correct me on the spot. Save me from error. Perfect my recall of every jot to the poor scripture and empower us to obey it. You are the teacher. We trust in you. Fill us and come to the forefront, forefront for the glory of the Father, the Lord Jesus Almighty, and your glory, Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I trust in you. You are my teacher, our teacher. Please save me from error. Okay, so Amen. let me go deeper again. The Lord is dealing with desperate spiritual diseases, spiritual sicknesses what we call sin because sin is a disease and how to cure those spiritual sicknesses and diseases. So how do you cure hypocrisy? If you're a hypocrite who does things for praise and you know it, the way you heal yourself by the grace of God, you don't pray publicly and you don't let people know you're fasting until God heals your heart. And now when you pray publicly or fast, you know you're not doing it for pretense, putting on a show. That's one. Secondly, when he says, let your yes be yes or no be no, that is a way of protecting and guarding yourself from using God's name flippantly, invoking God in your oaths when you have no intention of keeping your oaths and thereby shaming God. So he says, if you're a person who has a hard time, keeping your word, keeping your promise. The last thing you do is bring God into the equation and invoke God as your witness that you're going to do something when you know you have a hard time of keeping your word because not only do you sin, but you shame God by invoking him as a witness for or against you that you're going to keep your oath. So how do you cure yourself of that social, that... <clears throat> spiritual <clears throat> disease, wickedness, where you shame the Lord socially, because when you make an oath, you're making an oath in front of people, right? And mm -hmm. when you break that oath after invoking God, you dishonor God because people <laughs> take you at your word. Well, you're a man of God. You invoke God. The last thing you'll do is break your oath because the last thing you do is sin against God and shame the Lord. 
Well, if you know you have a hard time with that, then do not invoke God in your oaths because you know you have a hard time keeping your oaths. Keep God out of it until God heals your heart so that now you become a man or woman of integrity that when you do invoke God, you will honor him by doing what you promised you would do in his name. You understand? Yes. A third example. Third example. In Mark 9, 43 to 48, or Ma Matthew 18, 8 to 9, he says, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. That's hyperbole. Only someone who's stupid would take that literally, because if Jesus meant it literally, then all we would be is a walking torso. We wouldn't have any eyes. We wouldn't have any hands and feet. If the Lord meant to do it literally. So why is he saying pluck out your eyes? This is hyperbole. Exaggerated form of speech, meaning take drastic measures to cut off anything that will cause you to sin. It's not plucking my eye out. But what it is, is to cut off any activity that I know will cause my eyes to lust, cause my hands to sin, or where my feet will rush into involving myself in a situation where I'll sin. Cut those things off. So it's not cutting the eye off, but avoiding and cutting off things that will cause your eyes to lust. In other words, stop watching certain things. Stop going to certain places that will lead you to sin. So when it says cut off your, your arm, do not put yourself in a situation where you'll be tempted to use your hands to sin or where you'll be tempted to rush with your feet to sin. For example, people like to go to the bar. Well, you got to use your feet to get there, either driving or walking. <laughs> cut off your feet meeting. Cut off any activity that will result in you sinning. People like to go to nightclubs. Cut that off. That's what it means. See? See? You understand this point now? Yes, absolutely. So is the Lord saying, do not swear by God at all? Or is he saying, mm -hmm. here's the cure to your disease. You have a hard time keeping your word. You're constantly breaking your word. And you're constantly dishonoring the Lord. In order to avoid God's wrath, stop invoking him. Just say yes or no until God cures you. Or stop praying publicly Pray privately until God cures you of your hypocrisy or cut off anything that will lead you to use your eyes, hands, and feet to sin. So stop watching certain programs. And I pray I practice what I preach in Jesus' name because there are some, certain programs, comedies I watch. Man, can they tempt, be tempting. This is why there's nothing like the old comedies, honeymooners, because they won't cause you to sin. But today's comedies, these latest comedies, the language and the partial nudity, will cause you to stumble in sin. May God purify me and cleanse me to practice what I preach. So that's what the Lord means. Don't use your feet to rush into sin. That's why it says cut off your foot. Right? You know, rather enter life main than be tossed into hell, right, with your full body intact. So it's not cutting off my eye. It's cutting off things that will cause my eye to sin. It's not cutting off my hand. It's cutting off activities that will lead me to use my hands to sin or my feet to rush to sin, like driving to a nightclub, driving to a bar, driving to a beach where you're going to see half-naked women or half-naked men, women wearing G-strings with their butt cheeks sticking out to their, to their neck. Come on, brethren. I'm sorry. I don't want to offend you guys. I know it's hard, but as Christians, I pray I practice what I preach. It is nice to go to the beach, but let's be realistic. Today, in light of the rampant immorality and nudity you can go to your pool and you see women half naked i mean what's left just take it off i don't want to poison our minds may the lord jesus cleanse our minds our hearts by the blood of the lamb and the holy spirit purge our thoughts to be pure but let's be realistic you go to the beach you go to the pool you got women wearing g-strings or bikinis and you know whatever it is they're walking around with their cheeks sticking out i mean come on brethren Let's be realistic, man. And I want to ask all the men something. And I pray I practice what I preach. I pray I practice what I preach because I know it's hard. How many of you would be, be happy that was your daughter wearing a G-string where her breasts almost about to pop out 
or her butt cheeks are sticking up for the world to see if that was your daughter or if that was your mother, would you be at okay with that? See, let's practice what we preach. Remember, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. So just like I don't want my daughters to be half naked and men lusting for them, why then will I go to a place where I'm going to start lusting for other people's mothers and daughters, right, or sisters? May God give me the power to practice what I preach. I'm being realistic. And even the men, I'm not just on about women. What about you men? You go to the beach, you're half naked, dude. You're wearing tight shorts, right? And then you're all buffed. You're causing mothers to stumble, wives to stumble, and ladies to stumble because don't deceive yourself. There are married women who also struggle with lust. So they see a man who's fit and muscular. They start entertaining adulterous desires. That's what Jesus meant. Cut it off. Cut those things off. Pluck out your eye, meaning cut off any activity where you're going to start desiring sin and open yourself to temptation and God forbid you you plunge into sin. This is why the Muslims put us to shame. And I'll let you ask your next question, but I think this is important. I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to hammer this point and I pray I practice what I preach because brethren, I don't want to be a hypocrite, but I fail too. I'm weak. <clears throat> the fact is the Muslims put us to shame. What do I mean? If you are truly a devout Sunni Muslim, there is no free mixing. Muslim men are not allowed to go to a gym where there are women. Hmm. Muslim men are told only go to a gym where there are Muslim men. And women are to go to gyms where there are only women. What a beautiful system. I'm sorry. You may be offended at me. My ex-wife ended, ended up committing adultery several times because she found people in the gym, not in the nightclub. This is why you have these strict Sunni Muslims saying, you men should not go to a gym where there's free mixing, where there are men and women. Go to a gym, there's only men. Likewise, the women. Right? Because biblically speaking, unless and until the Holy Spirit convicts you and you're born of the Spirit and He constrains you and chastens you when you sin... If you're dead in sin, the worst thing you can do is allow free mixing of the sexes because when you put male and female together who do not have the Holy Spirit, who are not born of the Holy Spirit, who are not convicted of the Holy Spirit, it is inevitable they're going to lust and fall into sin, especially married folks who are not born of the Spirit, who have no allegiance to God. It happened to me. In fact, ask many of the men here. Men, those of you who end up divorced, how many of you ended up divorced because your spouses went to gyms where men preyed on them? That happened to me. That's how the adultery took place. So the Muslims here put us to shame. They put us to shame. Well, go ahead, brother. Sorry, I just had to rant. It's all right. Um, you're actually right because in Pakistan, um, like in the hall, all the gyms, um, there is there's only apart from one gym, which is for... Uh, basically, a quite quite like elite class, which allows male and female gym, um, to go to the gym together. But all the rest of the gyms are just either men only and then women only. There's no like mixing in the gyms. But yeah, so I got I got two more questions actually. I oh, sorry, three more questions. So this one is really going to irritate you now. So my fiance, she is a, uh, she's a Catholic. Well, yeah. she was baptized as Catholic. Uh, alongside with the family, they're all Catholics. Yeah. Now, uh, watch it, brother. Before I uh, move on, so you took one case and you gave me now an extreme case. So, guys, notice uh, the brilliance of my friend right here. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people in Iran. How would you know? Were you part of them? <laughs> Were you one of those dudes that got rode on? Okay, I know a lot of people in Iran. They go to men only gym. <laughs> because then they end up having, you know, sex with each other. Yes, you know why? Because Iran is a very oppressive system. And so all they can do is have sex with men and boys until they can find a woman to ravish. But I want to know, how do you know that? Were you part of that? Whose boyfriend were you? Or whose girlfriend were you? So let's take an example and give the opposite extreme, right? So let's take an extreme case, in order to show, well, even if you go to an all-men gym 
Well, hey, man, if you're a homosexual and you struggle with homosexuality because you like men who are muscular, then Jesus said, stay home. So Jesus would say to you, don't even go outside. Don't even work because you're going to be surrounded with men. Lock yourself in your home because you're a homosexual freak. Go ahead, brother. Okay. So as I said, this, this question is really going to, I know it's going to irritate you and it's going to really uh, get you off. So here I go. Uh, in, in my evangelist church, they say the baptism of Catholics is not real baptism. Who, what church? My uh, previous church that I, uh, I used who to go to. Who cares what they got to say? I would say, number one, pastor, who says your baptism is valid? And who said you're a valid pastor? Who validated you? Hmm. So because I, I, was, I was quite shocked when he said, uh, oh, my fiance needs to get baptized again in this church because oh, Catholic uh, baptism what? is not really a baptism. And I was like, what? No. Here's my answer to him. I'd say, number one, who says your baptism is valid because you're an evangelical? Who said you're a valid pastor? Who validated you? By what authority? Who are you? Mm. That's what, See, this is why you got to know how to talk back. So wait, who are you? You're an evangelical pastor. Who validated you? My pastor. Who validated him? Who says that your church is valid and your baptism is valid? So stop assuming what you have to prove. Yet to prove. You will admit the Catholic church was there before the evangelical church, right? I'd, I'd ask him. Historically... Who came first, the Catholics or you? The Catholics. Mm -hmm. You're an evangelical. You came out of what? Protestantism. Martin mm -hmm. Luther, John Calvin, and the like. And the Protestant Reformation goes back to what century? 16th century, 1500s. But you admit the Catholic Church was there before the Protestant Reformation because they were going up against the Catholic Church. So the Catholic Church is older. The Catholic Church has been there before the Protestant Reformation. And even as an evangelical, ask him, were there evangelicals in the 16th century? No. Evangelicalism is a recent phenomenon of the 20th century. So your, your church is only as old as the 20th century. And you have the audacity to say the Catholic baptism isn't valid? Mm. So what are you talking about, man? On what drugs? I mean, you know, what are you smoking crack or something? And then I'd ask him, are you saying infant baptism is invalid? But hold on. The Protestant reformers, Martin Luther, baptized infants. John Calvin baptized infants. Now, Martin Luther believed that when you got baptized, that's when you'd be born of the Spirit. John Calvin said it's a symbol of the sign of the covenant. It's not actual <clears throat> regenerative. It doesn't cause you to be born again. Azariah, if you don't change your name because you're an ummi like your prophet, illiterate like your prophet who's in hell, you don't even know how to spell Azariah, you dumb, illiterate jackass. You bring ass like Muhammad. It's not two Zs, it's one Z. I'm going to count of five, send you to Mecca to lick the black stone if you don't change your name. Five, four, you illiterate donkey like Muhammad. Three, two, one. No disrespect to donkeys. They're better than Muhammad. Get the out of here. Adam Seeker, I'm still waiting for the books, dude. All right, do you see my point? So then I would tell the evangelical pastor, are you saying Martin Luther, John Calvin were also wrong? So now you know more than them, even though historically you come out of the Protestant Reformation and the evangelical movement is no older than the 20th century? Who the hell do you think you are, man? That's how you talk back. That's what you say. Right. And do not let your fiancé was baptized as a Catholic to be deceived to get baptized again. Say no, do not do it. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be stopped going to that church anyways because I've, uh, I've told you which uh, the, that the Catholic church now I've joined. Uh, basically, I'm going to be going there from now on. So that's okay. pretty much it. Um, so uh, also in regards to certain uh, people talk about the gospel songs. Uh, some, some people say, oh, <laughs> I know, I know, I'm, I'm going to ask you questions. You're going to think, okay, yeah. what is no, the no, one sorry. about? Whoever mentions the gospel of Thomas, the guy makes jackasses seem smart. You know, like the brain asses, the donkey smart. The guy, whoever brought up gospel of Thomas said, have you read the gospel of Thomas? No, I've not. No, the person. 
What uh, person who mentioned the gospel? Who mentioned the gospel of Thomas to you? No, 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 no. Uh, no, they were just talking about the gospel songs, basically. Oh, so these gospel songs, some people say, oh, uh, it's okay to listen to them, but some people say, oh, that this, I don't the know. Gospel, what you're brother, my brother, I love you. Gospel of Thomas was written around the second century by a group of Gnostics. Now, let me give you a little history. Gnostics, the word gnosis means knowledge. There were a group, group of Greeks who were influenced by Greek philosophy that started infiltrating the church during the time of the apostles. Even John writes against them. And 1 John, the letter by John, 1 John, he's warning people not to associate with those who deny that Christ has come in the flesh. That's 1 John chapter 4. And 2 John, he says there are a group of people who are denying that Christ has come into the flesh and remains in the flesh. These are antichrists. Why? Because in the time of the apostles, there were Greeks converting and they were mixing Christianity with Greek philosophy. And they were creating a false form of Christianity. We call it Gnosticism. Mm. Gnosticism with a G. Gnosticism. Gnosis. All right. Yeah. The Greeks, <clears throat> many believed, See, it's all you Greeks again. Many believe that matter, the body, was evil. So that true liberation, true salvation came when you got rid of this physical body because it's evil and continue to exist as a soul. They didn't believe in the resurrection of the flesh because they thought the matter, the material universe, and the flesh, they're evil. They're a burden. You want to get rid of them and just live as a soul. Christianity didn't teach that. Christianity teaches God created the physical universe and it was good. But Satan and humans corrupted it. So now God is going to restore it, transform it, and make it good again. And your body was created good. But because of sin, it became corrupt. But God now is going to heal and restore your body. The Greeks didn't think this. So because they were mixing in, mixing in Christianity with their Greek philosophy, they came up with a weird system that said that Christ did not become flesh because Christ is divine. He is a divine being, a God. And he comes to save you from your flesh with knowledge, gnosis. This knowledge he gives you will liberate you to know how to save yourself and be freed of the body. So to them, Christ never became man. Christ either assumed a human form but never became man or Christ entered the man Jesus and used the man Jesus. And when the man Jesus got killed, Christ abandoned him. That's the gospel of Thomas. I don't know of anyone who thinks that the historical Jesus, who would have been Jewish and believed in the Old Testament, thought that the physical universe was evil, not that it was created good and became corrupted, and thought that your physical body is evil and you need to discard it because to the Jews... God created the body to be good, but sin corrupted it, but he's going to raise that body and transform it. How can you have the Gospel of Thomas telling you the teaching of the historical Jesus when Jesus did not buy into the Greek belief that matter and human bodies are evil and need to be discarded? This is the Gospel of Thomas. And in the Gospel of Thomas, Christ claims to be God. He's God. He speaks as God. He speaks as being all in all. But the problem is, in the Gnostic system, there isn't just one God. It gets very confusing. So you want me to confuse you? And I ask the Holy Spirit to perfect my recall of the facts, save me from error. Okay? This is what they thought. They thought that the God of the Old Testament was an evil God, a cruel God, a lesser God, who in his arrogance thought he's the only God, and he created this physical universe which is evil. Because they believed in what they call the pleroma. Pleroma. So then you have what's the monad. And here you have aeons. That you have this highest level of deity. And he's pure spirit. He is perfect deity. But from him emanate lesser gods called aeons. Aeons. A-E-O-N-S. So you have here... Imagine, let's say this is the monad, right? Some would even call it the demiurge, but demiurge is believed to be the go-between. Anyway, so then from him comes a lesser deity. From that one comes a lesser deity and a lesser deity and a lesser deity until you get to the lowest rung and you get the God of the Old Testament. 
Jesus comes from one of the higher aeons, from the Pleroma. So he comes to set you free from the God of the Old Testament. That's what they taught. So you really think the Gospel of Thomas is what Jesus would teach? <laughs> and did you know what Jesus said about women in the Gospel of Thomas? And saying 114? He's going to make women male because only males are worthy of the kingdom. So he's going to take every woman and make her into a male soul to make them worthy of the kingdom. Let me show you that. It's saying 114. <laughs> and this is supposed to be the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ah. You ready? Yeah. Here you go. Gospel of Thomas 114. Here you go. Simon Peter said to him, let Mary leave us, for women are not worthy of life. Jesus said, I myself shall lead her in order to make her male, so that she too may become a living spirit, resembling you males. For every woman who will make herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven. So you, here you have Jesus, the original transgenderist. Jesus is all about transgenderism. Women, you're actually men trapped in women's bodies. And I'm here to set you free and make you males because you got to be a male soul to be worthy of my kingdom. Whoever mentions the Gospel of Thomas, that tells you they're idiots, they're stupid, they don't know what they're talking about. Abu Shak, what's even better is how the Shia mounted your mother and did muta with her. Keep barking like your prophet and I'm going to bring my cat to piss on your crown. Get the hell out of here, punk. All right. You want me there? So you got it now, brother? So uh, this is yeah. the gospel of Jesus. Why don't you follow it? Forget about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Actually, uh, my question to you was about the songs. Songs. Gospel songs these days. Oh, I thought you said gospel of Thomas, man. No, <laughs> no. I think we waste ten minutes of my breath talking about. No, the but this, this is this is good information. So if if this comes yeah. up any anywhere in the future, this, this is I, you, you've taught me this. So I will actually be able to use this. Uh, what you've taught me, and I'm going to research about this and try to re refute people what you've taught me. So thank you. This was another I sort of like good information. Ten minutes of my breath and life. Ten minutes where I will not have ever again. Ten minutes that are gone. So now I have to look for eternity because this 10 minutes have on talking about a gospel you didn't mention. Okay. So what was your question then? Um, you know, the gospel songs actually these days. Gospel right? songs? Yes. What gospel songs? So oh, you like, music. why'd you just say Christian music, dude? Oh. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Like what gospel songs? There's a gospel called songs. Where is it? I'd like to read it. Is that the yeah. fifth gospel? You mean Christian music? Yes. All right. Uh, so when it comes to Christian music, some people say like it's okay to listen. Some people say uh, it depends on what you're listening. it's what? not yes or no, brother. It depends on what you're listening. Mm. I can't say yes. I can't say no. Why? There's a lot of music that's garbage. It masquerades as Christianity, but it's anything but Christianity. It is simply secular music, psychological music that is being presented as Christian music. In other words, they use christian names and they may throw in a few christian words but it's really nothing more than worldly secular music that's all about psychology and emotion so you have to discern is this really christian music that glorifies jesus christ that is biblically centered doesn't contradict the bible or is it all about emotions all about you all about psychology because satan will infiltrate even Christian music, Christian mov movies, Christian churches. Satan is busy because he doesn't sleep. Demons don't sleep. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, infiltrating. So he's going to infiltrate the Christian music industry. He's going to infiltrate Christian films. He's going to infiltrate churches. And he will sabotage Christian films and music, masking it. Because Satan appears as an angel of light, meaning he is a great deceiver and he puts on what they call a mask, a facade. He will come looking like an angel, which is a mask. It's a facade. It's a lie. 
to keep you off his scent that this is actually Satan. So what better way to present something that's Christian music, but in reality, it's anything but Christian. It's all about you, your emotions. It's all about psychology. Has nothing to do with Jesus and his message. I mean, listen to a lot of the Christian music on radio. It's all about your heart, your mind, and you. And It's not focused on Christ and his message. It's more focused on you and why you're important and your needs being met and how God is there to be your servant. Listen more like to self, yeah, more like self-glorification rather than his glorification. Exactly. So this is why I can't say all Christian music is bad. All Christian music is good. As with anything, discernment. The more you walk with the spirit, the more you understand the word of God, the more wisdom the spirit gives you, the better you will be able to detect garbage that claims to be Christian music. You see? So that's the, that's the thing. I can't say all of it's bad, all of it's good. Mm -hmm. Now contrast that to when you go to the Catholic Church or the Orthodox Church. Sunday, see this is where people understand the purpose of Sunday. Sunday is not the time for Christians to come and hear sermons, expository preaching. Sunday is the time where the church prepares herself for the sacrifice. See, people don't understand what Sunday is. Sunday is where you go on the Lord's Day to honor Christ who conquered death, sin, Satan, the grave, by his resurrection on the Lord's Day. That's why they would gather. And to then offer God the sacrifice of our Lord, which you then take for your medicine, your healing, your food. That's what Sunday's for. It's for you to come, take Jesus' sacrifice that he gave on our behalf to the Father, and then through that sacrifice, Christ giving you his healing, saving benefits and power. Because his flesh heals you, his flesh nourish, nourishes you and saves you, his blood heals you, his blood nourishes you, his blood cleanses you spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically. So that's why... The mass, the liturgy is centered around preparing hearts and minds to enter God's holy place, his presence, and to receive the sacrifice of our Lord as we offer it to God in thanksgiving and then receive what the Lord gave for us to offer to the Father for our healing. Now, I'm saying that because if you go listen to their songs, it's all biblical. All the prayers is focused on God. All the prayers is focused on us participating with God, in God. And you'll hear a lot of Bible quoted. Psalms are quoted. Verses from the Gospels are quoted. Passages from the letters are quoted in the Mass. But a lot of people don't understand because in some places, the Mass will either be in Latin or in Greek or Aramaic, and most people don't understand. But if you understood, you're going to see, oh, he just quoted Psalm 103. Oh, that's Romans chapter 1. Wow, that's Matthew chapter 26. It's filled with references to the Psalms, to the letters of the apostles like Paul and Peter or James and John, to the Gospels, the words of our Lord, filled with those type of passages as they sing those verses and sing praises to God, glory to the Father, glory to the Son, glory to the Holy Spirit. That's worship. See the difference? That's worship, right? Yeah. But go listen to, uh, what is it, Caleb? I want you to listen to Caleb for one whole day, guys. Here's some homework. I want you to count how many songs are God-centered, Christocentric, Christ-centered, and how many of them are centered on you, your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts, how many of them are nothing more than secular music, mass as Christian music, that caters to your needs, your desires, and your whims, that are human-centered, not Christ-centered? Just do that for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Do that for yourself and see if I'm lying. Right. But anyway, I hope that answered your question. I don't know if it did. It did, absolutely. 
uh, because I, I've, I've stopped listening to secular music. I think it's because of like me uh, personally, uh, of my yeah. dealings and stuff. So I, I've Wait, for me, I get to that point, brother, that God will sanctify me, that I still listen to some music when I work out that I used to listen as a kid. Like, for example, uh, what's this song? I'll tell you. Hold on. One of my favorite songs. A lot of them are good. But this one, you guys, if you're as old as me, you're going to know what song I'm talking about. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and hold on. What's in it? Dude, so I was just li listening to, come on, you man. Oh, this is a, a book. A man uh, down under. Is it a... Uh, Hold on, man. Look at you making me forget the music. What's your next question? Go ahead. I'll find it. Uh, you are you talking about BG staying alive? Maybe. No, no, no. Oh, that's a good song, but no. Shame on you, man. Oh, you listen to that? I thought you gave up secular music. Just kidding. No, I, I used to listen to it. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm giving it up. I still, when I go to the gym, I listen to uh, more Christian music. So yes. Here, here this is a. Hold on. Let me show you. But well, what's your other question? As I find the song. Uh, so. Um, I went to the Catholic Church and they told me that I cannot receive Eucharist yet, the blood and the body of Christ. Yes, you know uh, why? Uh, yes, and they didn't I'm explain to me why, God. but I want you to explain to me why, please. <laughs> ha! One second. I know one day. I was listening to it yesterday when I was doing cardio. So now let's hear the song. <laughs> uh, then gave me a Vegemite sandwich. Okay, now. When you went to the Catholic Church, they told you you can't take the Eucharist. Yes. Okay. Because I asked someone because uh, it was the first time, so I asked someone like, "Am I allowed to take this?" And they were like, "No, not, not yet." Yeah. I'm like, uh, "But I, I couldn't ask them to explain to me because obviously it was it was quick and everything was happening." So I was I was wondering if you could explain to me uh, what is because the reason? Because you're a convert from Islam and have mm -hmm. never been baptized in water. Mm -hmm. As such, if you're not baptized in water, in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. You are not united to Jesus Christ, and therefore you're not one with him in the spirit. Communion, Eucharist, the flesh and blood of Christ, are given to the baptized only. Uh, so it's not just the Catholic Church. Any solid church, the Orthodox. <clears throat> when I say Orthodox, I'm talking about the Eastern, the Oriental, all of them. All the ancient churches, and even Protestant churches, if they're solid still, even though they don't have the fullness of the truth, will say, since you left Islam and you're a follower of Christ, you must get baptized. Until you get baptized, you cannot take the Eucharist because that is a sacrament, or as the Baptists would say, an ordinance given to those who are baptized and united to Jesus Christ. So that's why they said what they said. And that be any church that is a solid church that's trying to be biblical. Orthodox, same thing. The Orthodox say, no, you can't take it. You haven't been baptized. I mean... You, you're following Jesus, but it's that act of baptism that seals the deal. The act of baptism mm -hmm. seals the deal. It's when you're baptized and the Spirit comes upon you, makes you alive, and unites you to Christ. That's when you become one with Christ in the Spirit and part of His body. And now you can take the Eucharist. And if you actually read Acts 2, 37 to 47, if you read Acts 2, 37 to 47, it says 3,000 people got baptized. After they got baptized, they continued in the teachings of the apostles, and they would meet daily, and they would break bread. When? After they were baptized. 3,000 of them on the day of Pentecost. Right? No, Adam Seeker. If there's a church that says you got to get baptized, take Eucharist, that is a tradition that's inspired by God, revealed by God, because that is an inspired tradition handed down by God through the apostles and in Scripture. There is no communion for someone who's not baptized. And if you go to a church, Adam Seeker, that didn't tell you that, then that's not a church that's following the Bible, because the Bible makes it mandatory to be baptized, to be part of the church of Christ and united to Christ. It's not just in Acts 2, 37 to 47. If you read it, when 3,000 got baptized that day, then they continued in the teachings of apostle, and they would meet daily to break bread. It's Romans chapter 6, 
verses 3 to 6. You can Romans 6, 3 to 10. It's also in Galatians 3, 27 to 28. It says, all of you who've been baptized into Christ, right? All of you have been baptized into Christ are one with Christ. And you become the seed of Abraham and the children of God. I don't know of any Christian who really is a serious Christian that says you can take Eucharist without being baptized. I don't know where they would get that from. So when you say tradition, even that's a false dichotomy. Tradition means passing on and receiving. Handing down something, receiving something. Did you know that the Bible is a tradition? Don't take my word for it. Go look the word traditions in the Greek New Testament. Go look it up. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. Or 1 Corinthians 11, verse 2, right? Or 1 Corinthians 11, 23. The word traditions in the Greek means to pass on something, hand down something, or receive something. In the active sense, it means to hand something down. Passive sense means to receive something. Well, God passed on his revelation, handed down his revelation, passed on the scriptures, handed down the scriptures. So the scriptures are part of those traditions handed down, passed on by God through the prophets and the apostles and their companions received by the church. So this is a false dichotomy. It's a tradition. What do you think? The Bible's not a tradition. You think that tradition's not from God? There's inspired tradition. Tradition revealed, passed on from God through the apostles and their witnesses and received by the church. That's even 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 2. What I received, I passed on to you. Paul is saying what I received, I passed on to you. And what did he receive? The gospel. What did he pass on to you? The gospel. And what was the gospel? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. That's tradition, dude. So this is a false dichotomy on your part, Adam Seeker. Oh, it's tradition, right? Yeah, tradition that's inspired and revealed. And the Bible is a tradition. And there are traditions in the Bible that Paul tells you to follow. Here. Let me give you an example. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 15, brother. Can you read it? Um, yep. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians 2, verse 15. 2, verse 15. Okie dokie. 2, what? 2 Thessalonians chapter word, 2, verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15. Okay, got it. Um, so then, brothers and sisters. Now, wa hold on, watch this. Justin, if you're talking about someone in Saudi Arabia who doesn't have access to a church, who can be murdered and killed if they're caught as Christians and they don't have a church to get baptized and their only solution is that they baptize one another, then that's an exception. And God understands your circumstances and will make exceptions to the general rule. That's what you're referring to. But if you're not stupid to tell someone to go dunk his friend in a pool or in a lake when he has plenty of solid churches with spirit-filled, <clears throat> Holy Spirit-ordained bishops, then no, shut your mouth. You're not being a Christian. You're one of those fake who think you're being a Christian. See, this is, again, people who think they know the scripture. But go ahead. All right. um, so then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast uh, to the teachings. We pass now, on you notice to you. the guys. Do you see how perverted this translation is? Pay attention, brethren. Second Thessalonians two fifteen. Without him telling me, I bet you you're reading the NIV. Yes. Did you catch it? NIV is an evangelical translation. Notice how they translated the Greek term for traditions. Read Second Thessalonians two fifteen again. Wait, wait. Read in NIV. Uh, okay. Um, should, should I read the whole thing again? Read 15 again, yeah, NIV. Okay. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings. Did you we see it? They translated teachings. Brothers and sisters, stand firm, hold fast to the teachings. It's not teachings. It's traditions. But did you see what the evangelical translation NIV did? It took the Greek word traditions, translated 
the word as teachings. So that someone who doesn't know the Greek would think that Paul said, hold fast to the teachings when it says traditions. That's why if you look at your note in the NIV, it will have a note saying, or traditions. Yeah, it does. Say it again. It does, yes. It says, uh, or traditions in the uh, verse 15. Yes. Wow. So did you see what Paul told you? Hold fast, hold fast, and stand firm in the traditions mm -hmm. that you receive from me, whether by letter or word of mouth. Now, why would the NIV translate it as teachings? Because it's an evangelical translation. Here it is. Here's what it says. I'm going to put it on the screen. So now, Adam, if you're listening, Adam, you'll see your Bible says there are traditions revealed, inspired by the Spirit, passed through the apostles and their followers, some of which are in Scripture. There it is, 2 Thessalonians 2.15. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which were taught by us, either by word, by the mouth, or by letter. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, because um, this is a uh, national international version, and I've got this King James Version. So King James Version is, is uh, explicitly saying, um, Therefore, brethren, set fast and hold traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word traditions, huh? or our epistles. Yes. There you go. So, brother, that's why they didn't let you take the Eucharist. You're not baptized yet. Okay. You get my point? Yes. So there you go. I hope that answers your question. I don't know if that answered all your questions. Yep. Uh, and so if someone passes away before getting baptized, you mentioned it a bit. Uh, Wait, you... oh, yeah. Sorry? The question is, okay, you want to get baptized because you love mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Let's say you die. Okay. Who determines when you die? Lord. Okay. So if the Lord takes you before you get to be baptized, mm -hmm. you didn't catch him by surprise. In other words, it's like, oops. I lost another one. He didn't get baptized. No, the Lord looks at your desire. There's something called the baptism of desire. And you're, the Orthodox know their tradition better than me. But you'll find this also in the writings of the early Christians. I know the Catholics believe this. Baptism of desire means to no fault of your own, you eagerly desire baptism, but you are not able to get baptized. And let's say you die. God is a God of infinite love, compassion, and mercy. He's not a cruel, wicked tyrant who tries to find just one mistake to damn you to hell. No, God goes out of his way to love and forgive and be merciful and be patient. Yeah, he he's saw your right. desire, right? And because of that desire, it will be counted to you as baptism. Right. Got it. You get my point? Absolutely, yes. Yep. Justin, keep pontificating, and I'm going to send you to Charles Finney so that you and him can go around baptizing people without any valid authority to do so. So everyone got it? You got that, right? So don't worry about it, brother. You're in the hands of the Lord. May the Lord give you many years of fruitful ministry and you get to the baptismal yeah. font. But if he summons you, he sees your desire. It's not you didn't want to get baptized. You wanted to get baptized, but you had to wait. And the Lord sees the desire of your heart and it will be counted to you as baptism if the Lord summons you into his presence. Amen. Marcel, no, that's not the answer. If you this is what you took away, then no. That's not the answer. And that's why you're a dangerous tool. Because if you can't get what I said, that means you can't get what the Bible said. No, I didn't say that. So should I get you the hell out of here for twisting my words? No. I just said, if you desire to get baptized, but you couldn't get baptized, then your desire will be counted as baptism. So no, you don't enter without baptism. You enter because of baptism. Because that's what God uses to make you one with Christ in the spirit. So if you die desiring to be baptized, that becomes your baptism. See, this is why you're dangerous and need to get the hell out of my channel. And you wonder why I'm, I'm impatient with these clowns. So go ahead, brother. That's, that's great. Um, and last but not the least, uh, what is your um, opinion on um, Corinthians? So this... Talk that is happening basically in regards to um, okay, Corinthians. What is it about Corinthians? Uh, yep, just open the well, you didn't open anything, you went in complete darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Corinthians. 
first Corinthians. What happened? First Corinthians 8. What about it? So it talks about food. Yes. And I, okay. So halal food. First Corinthians. So it, talks about, it talks about the food that is given to the statues. Obviously, I understand. Like, you know, when you sacrifice, you have all that blah, 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 la, 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 la. La, 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 la. Okay, he's talking yeah. about verses 1 to 13, but it's also picked up in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 14 all the way to 33. 1 Corinthians 10, 14 to 33, and 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 to 13. Paul talks about meats offered to idols, sacrifices to idols, idols, whether you can eat them or not. So, but what is your specific question? So I can answer it for you. So yeah, um, so what? Uh, so it it talks about that. Uh, what go when Jesus talks about it does not what? No, no. That, don't misquote Mark seven nineteen. That's not what he meant. Yeah. Mark so, seven nineteen. Mark seven nineteen. The Lord didn't say all foods are clean per se. He was making a deeper point. Mark seven eighteen to twenty three says, the food that you eat doesn't defile your spirit. The food you eat will be then purged. Out of your body. What he's talking about, physical food is purged by your body. That's why you end up going to the bathroom. That's what Jesus is saying. So food doesn't defile your spirit. What defiles your spirit, your heart, is your evil, filthy, sinful inclinations. Yeah. So Jesus is making a different point in Mark 7. Okay, so let's put that aside. So guys, I want you to listen to this. I've addressed this issue about meats and sacrifice idols, but I'm going to go a little deep. If you... Listen and do not let the trolls like Samar Kumar having a conversation with Joel Johnson instead of listening to the conversation because they're here to talk about their own agenda because what they have to say is more important than listening to brothers getting question, answers to questions that would help them understand the Bible, which is why Samar Kumar and Joel Johnson, I'm going to give them a one-way ticket to hell so they can go to hell, which is in Israel, the Valley of Hinnom, and they can stay there and they can play patty cake all day long and talk about their personal issues. So, Joel Johnson, Samar Kumar, contact me on Skype because I'm going to buy you a one-way ticket to hell. So you can go to hell. Now, when I say hell, I'm talking about the Valley of Hanam. Because the word hell, Gehina, comes from the Valley of Hanam. So hell is in Israel. I'm going to send you to hell. You stay there. You guys can play patty cake all day because you're not staying on my channel. So get the hell out of here. Get Joel out of here and get Somar Kumar out of here. Have fun talking to each other. And you can even give each other your number. Maybe you can start dating each other. Maybe there are church who will, adorn, uh, who, will, who will then ordain and bless your homosexual union. Now coming to you, brother. Are you listening? Yes. See, I mean, they don't listen, brother. They pretend to come here to, to learn, but they're here the most socialized because they're trying to get married. Now, some of them are coming out of the closet. They know homosexuality is a sin. Lesbianism is a sin and God condemns it. But rather, they're trying to see if secretly they can get a guy, if he's a guy or a woman, get a woman, see if they can secretly get married and pretend to be Christian. Sorry, guys, it's not the channel for you. Funny, you're going to be sent out of here without any money, without any honey, because you're very funny and I'm about to stick my foot down your throat. Okay, now, focus, everyone. Are you ready? Focus. Everyone ready now? And you wonder why I'm mean. Oh, Tham, you're mean. Because you got clowns coming to a session that's supposed to be Q&A, but instead of listening, they're distracting like sons of the devil. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Lord Jesus, forgive us. Lord Jesus, save me from my own hypocrisy and pride. Have mercy on us. Okay, now, you listening, brother? Yes. Let's talk about food, what Paul is saying and what he's not saying. Paul is dealing with Gentiles who... We used to worship gods and goddesses, okay? Gods and goddesses. You with me there? They now have converted and they worship the only true God, okay? Now, guys, understand the context. 1 Corinthians 8, verses 1 to 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 14 to 33. Focus and learn. Their questions will bless you as you get answers and you're going to know your Bible with greater depth for the glory of Jesus Christ. So now you can teach others. That's why he's asking. Notice he's taking notes because he wants to know so he can share. And God bless him. All right. Now, as we focus on that, they have family members that still go to the temple. Like you, you were a Muslim. You're now a Christian. You got family members that go to the mosque, masjid. They still celebrate Eid, Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitr. You know, 
Fitr, whatever it is. Okay. So now the question is, Paul, I got cousins, I got uncles, they go to the temple, they sacrifice to Zeus and Hermes or Diana. What should I do when they invite me? That's what he's talking about. And he says, you cannot go to the temple, partake of the sacrifices, because when they sacrifice, they're sacrificing to demons. Because Paul says, the gods and goddesses of the nations are demons, Satan and demons. That's 1 Corinthians 10, verses 19 to 22. Specifically, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 20. The, what they sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons. And he says, when you then sacrifice to demons... You are now entering into fellowship with them. And if you are born of the Spirit and you are partaking of the Eucharist, you cannot have fellowship with Christ and demons. That's not going to happen. You're going to anger the Lord. Stay away. Do not go to the temples. Now, how does that apply to Islam? Your case. Allah of the Quran is not the true God. He is Satan. He is Baal. Therefore, to go to the mosque to celebrate Eid or to celebrate <clears throat> Ikhtar. Is that what they call it when they break the fast? Yeah. Okay. I'm forgetting my Arabic. I don't even know English. Anyway, is to then <clears throat> condone and legitimize their worship as worship pleasing to the true God. No. All of the Quran is a false God. Their festivities are honoring Satan, even though they don't think they're on honoring. Yeah, Iftar, thank you, brother. It's been a while. My Arabic is back. I'm old and I'm getting older. May the Lord perfect my recall of scripture and facts and not forget. Yep, Iftar, exactly. See? Sorry about that. There is another term I'm confusing it with. Anyway, too many Arabic words, man. I have our time in English, but you get it. Iftar, thank you. Yes. When you go there, you are now celebrating a false god False prophets, false religion. You can't go. But then Paul says something else, though. Now, here's where people ask me, well, what if I eat halal meat? If you go to 1 Corinthians 10 and you read 14 to 33, specifically 1 Corinthians 10, 24 to 33. At the time of Paul, people may not know this. The meats that were sacrificed to idols would then be sold in the meat market. They would have a meat market where the leftover meat of the sacrifices would be sold. So if you go to the meat market, you'd buy meat that was left over from a sacrifice to Zeus. So then Paul says, the same one that the Shia use on your mother, E.H. E.H., the shampoo that your mother uses when the Shia come and do muta with her like a whore, that's the same shampoo I use. So ask your mother, it really works, because the Shia really love her after she gets shampooed. In Muta, like the horse she is. So, good job, E.H. Keep barking and I stuff you with your vomit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Now, coming to you, brother. So, Paul says, if there are meats sold in the market, you can buy those meats. That's what he says. 1 Corinthians 10, 24, 33. You can take those meats. You can eat them when you praise God and thank God in Christ for meat. Because the earth belongs to God and everything in it. So the animals belong to the true God, not to Zeus. So though they're sacrificing that animal to Zeus, that animal belongs to God. And that animal is God's property. So you take that meat, meat and thank God for this animal that provided you meat. That's what he says. Are you getting 1 Corinthians 10, 24 to 33? You see it? Sorry, yeah. I'm not picking up. So that means I can go to a halal market. I can buy the meat, go home, bless it in Jesus' name, and it's sanctified. But then he then is answering the question, well, what if I'm invited to a home? Because remember, you're a Muslim. Your parents invite you. And they want to give you food. Paul says, go and eat unless the person tells you this was originally offered as a sacrifice, then you don't eat it. Nice. First Corinthians 10, 24 to 33. Okay, now understand what he's saying. So I'm a pagan. You're my cousin. I say, come over for dinner. I give you a plate of meat. 
But I don't say that I sacrifice this to Zeus or Diana. Paul says eat it. But if I say, oh, cousin, this was a sacrifice to Zeus. Paul says, then don't eat it. Stop. Okay. Why? For my conscience sake. What does he mean? Yeah. If you eat the meat after I told you it's for Zeus, then what you're doing is you're telling me I'm okay being a pagan worshiping Zeus. It's okay. Paul says, no, you don't do that. You don't let him think he's mm. okay worshiping a false god and sacrificing to him. That's when you take a stand and say, cousin, I can't do it. Why? Zeus is in God. What do you mean? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is alive. Zeus is a false god. I'm sorry. That's what you do. So that means you're invited to your cousin's home. They take the plate of food, say nothing about it. Your mom cooks you. She doesn't say anything. But if they say, and I'm sorry to hurt you, brother. If they say, Bismillah, say, no, I'm sorry. Can't do it. Yeah. If they say, Bismillah in front of you, whatever it is, I'm sorry. I know it's hard, my brother, sister, Jesus Christ, who come out of Islam. I'm just trying to be faithful to scripture. Why? Because if they say, Bismillah and eat, that means you're saying, yeah, they're Allah. Your Allah is one and the same. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I was recently invited to a wedding, uh, a Muslim wedding in the Nikah, especially. Uh, so I did not go for this very reason because for me it didn't feel right. Good. Uh, because the the first was, was like, convicting you. Yeah, Your because I, I felt bad because was for me I know. Go ahead. Mm, because for me I, uh, I I knew it was wrong because they're gonna pray to Allah and Muhammad and then do the That's whole right. ritual thing. For me, I did not want to participate in it. So, and I knew it was going to be full of Muslims, and Good. they're gonna. And, I, and and for me, I'm I'm not gonna even uh, pray. I'm, I'm not even gonna pretend to do anything just for the sake of it, because not like even in the UK, people would know that I'm. Um, people do not know that I'm an ex-Muslim, uh, now of a believer of Christ. So for me, I don't want to pretend. So I just don't go to yeah. these sort of places. By the way, uh, we have Allah is Satan. A Shia whore, son of a Shia whore. He said, Jah sent me. No, actually, Muhammad's father sent you. Satan, who molested Muhammad and his mother. So here's where you go. Allah, Satan, when you lick the black stone, make sure you look, lick my shoes because Muhammad is under my feet because Jesus burned Muhammad in hell like a dog. So on you and your prophet. Okay, go ahead. Because someone in the background. Go ahead, brother. I'm listening to you. But you know who convicted you, brother? Jesus. You guys see, he's a babe in the faith. His conscience was already bothering him. And he knew it wasn't right because that's the Holy Spirit who loves you is protecting you. Hmm. Because it, like, even then I have like uh, these issues where, you know, like uh, in halal meats and stuff. Like especially when uh, now it's, I think it's from a long time in uh, a lot of places. So for people like, oh, the meat sacrifice and stuff like that. Oh, but why don't you come for iftar and stuff? And I'm like, I'm not interested because because they have to loudly pray in iftar. They have to, you know, when yes. the Adhan is happening, when they're calling out the Lord God's uh, prayer, call to prayer and stuff. And you have to hear it. You have to listen to it. And to that, for me, I can't do it. And even no, at the what? restaurant. So that's why I'm like, I'm completely like, no, I'm sorry, but I, I can't be involved in this. Amen. Even though I did not know, but thank you for clarifying this whole thing because for me, it is wrong. Now you saw, because I'm giving you 1 Corinthians 10, 24, yeah. 30, that's what Paul said. Yeah. It's right there. So let me repeat the point of scripture. You cannot go to a temple and partake of sacrifices to their gods and goddesses because mm -hmm. then you fellowship demons and the Lord Jesus will condemn you. But you can take meat that's sold in a market. That was originally a sacrifice for, let's say, a false god. You go to the market, you buy the meat, you come, you offer it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is sanctified and it's purified because of the Lord Jesus. Because we know that everything in the earth, that's what 1 Corinthians 10 says, 24, 33. The earth and the fullness thereof belong to the Lord. All the animals belong to Jesus. They're his, given to you. So you thank the Lord for the meat and eat. But then again, let me qualify it for you who have relatives who are into paganism or Islam. If they invite you, if they invite you to a festivity that you know they're going to be sacrificing Allah, stay away. Yeah. If they invite you home 
and they give you food. Like your mother is a Muslima. She says, come, I have food for you. She gives you the food, but says nothing about Bismillah or name of whatever. Eat. But Paul says, the moment the person tells you the sacrifice was for another God, that's when you object saying, I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah. You with me there? And by the way, this is not just a Christian dilemma. Right now, recently, there's an uproar taking place on YouTube, on social media, because Sheikh Asim al-Hakim was asked a question that caused now the Muslims to flip. Can we eat meat at McDonald's? <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not lying. Right here, let me show it to you. Here, uh, <laughs> This is not just a dilemma for Christians because Muslims also are told in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 5, that the meat of the people of the book is lawful for you and their women. Meaning, Muslims can eat the meat of Jews and Christians. Um, Jews and Christians. Because supposedly, they have the same God. That's why Muslim men can marry Jewish women or Christian women. But then someone asked the question, well, in these countries, they're no longer Christian, they're secularists, and they don't kill the animal in an Islamic fashion. And what if a Christian names the name of Jesus when they sacrifice? Can we eat the meat like McDonald's? Asim Hakim says that you presume the meat is lawful because you presume they're still Christians and you presume that they sacrificed it to God and then you eat it on that basis. But others said, no, 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 no. We shouldn't presume that at all. Christians pray in the name of Jesus. What if they invoke the name of Jesus? Then it becomes unlawful. And a lot of these people in the West are not Christian. So it started a debate here. I'm going to show you the link. So this is not just unique to Christianity. Okay. It's not just unique to Christianity. Here it is. Can I eat McDonald's, Burger King, and steaks in USA? Okay. Let me find it. You're laughing at that, huh? You're laughing at that, brother? Here it is. Yeah. Can I eat McDonald's burger? You want me to play the clip? Let me share it, and I'll play the clip. You ready? Yes. So notice, guys, even the Muslims have a dilemma. I don't know what to do. Jejuda, your mother is bald too. Ask the Shia. They say she's bald on her head and her butt cheeks. They would know. Okay. Now watch it. Let's play it. You ready? Yep. And you say, Sam, you're mean. No one likes you. Excuse me, Sheikh. Um, I'm from the United States. And I still, I still have some issues about eating halal and haram food in the United States. According to my experience when I lived there, I used to live in a city, in a state, which is hard for me to find halal foods. For example, I lived in Massachusetts that time, and then it's not easy for me to find halal chicken, halal beef, which is basically halal, you know, but I don't know this, this beef or chicken, is it halal or not? But sometimes I'm so obsessed that I want cheeseburgers from the McDonald's. I, want, I also want steak from... Um, the restaurant so the question is is it okay for me to eat uh the americans cheeseburger and burger king steak like that short question short answer or long answer it's up to you <laughs> short answer yes yes how do you that <laughs> why why in surah al-ma'idah chapter number five Allah tells us in the beginning that the slaughtered meat done by the Jews and the Christians is halal for us. Okay. Is America a Christian country? No. Yes or no? Yes. Now, second problem. I don't know. They slaughtered or not? I don't no know. Problem. As long as they're Christians... I say Bismillah and I eat. See? Evidence from the Sunnah. Watch the it. Prophet alayhi salatu By the way, way, this is the short answer. It's three minutes. I just gave you another link, brother. It's a 10 minute answer that he gave. This is the long answer 10 minutes. I can't play the 10 minutes. You see, the Muslims also have the same dilemma. Should we eat the meat of McDonald's? Maybe they're not. 
Christian. Maybe they're unbelievers. Maybe they don't slaughter. Maybe they kill animals in an inhumane way. Maybe they invoke the name of Jesus. Other Muslim scholars disagreed with him. Yasser Qadi says he doesn't eat meat at McDonald's because he's not certain whether they slaughter in a humane way and whether they've invoked the name of Jesus or not. So Yasser Qadi says he doesn't eat their meat. He'll only eat at halal places. You see? You understand? It's not just Christians. Even Muslims struggle with this issue. So my point is clear. All of the Quran is not God. It's not God. I don't want your meat. Now, Paul said, I can buy the meat from a halal store and then go home and bless it. Like, you see what he said? Yeah, yeah. go eat McDonald's because Christian, America is a Christian nation. Just say Bismillah. No, you say Bismillah wa ibn wa ruh al qudus ilah wahid. In the name of the Father and of the Son, Holy Spirit, one God. In Jesus' name and eat. But let me let him finish his response and then I'll get to you. Was invited by a Jewish woman. Muhammad, Jewish woman. She said, Come, I have prepared for you a ram and I cooked it on fire because I like you like it so the prophet said to his companions come let's go and eat when they went the prophet did not ask the woman is the money halal or haram because we know Jews deal with riba but the prophet did not ask the prophet did not ask is this the biha halal or it fell from the mountains or you found it dead he did not ask he simply said bismillah and ate so we don't know more than the prophet the most important thing is okay let him finish it and i'll get back to you brother just two more minutes Hold on. that there is no cross contamination with pork so if they fry pork or ham with halal meat, no, this is contamination. But if not, then go ahead and eat, inshallah, double cheeseburger and hold the lattice. There you go. Okay, now go listen to his long answer. Okay, now, here's what's ironic. He just gave you the story of the Jewish woman, right? You see the example he gave? He goes, a Jewish woman invited Muhammad and she came around. But he didn't finish the story. That's the same Jewish woman that poisoned the lamb. And when Muhammad ate it, his friend Bishr ate and died from the poison there. Muhammad ate enough of it where he spit it out, but he didn't die immediately. But the poison rotted in his blood until years later he died a humiliating death. That part he didn't mention. Yeah. All right, but any, anyway, brother, you got your answer there, right? Yes, I do. Uh, because... Um... At the end of the day, what I don't understand is this sheikh does not understand the fact that in Pakistan, if he said the exact same thing, people would be stoning him to death just for saying this. Because in Pakistan, if, it's, if you have anyone who talks about that a Muslim can eat halal food, you, you, you're asking for your death. Yeah. Amen. So... I'm like, I don't understand where he's coming from. Like, this is why I don't understand it. In Islam in UK is different. Islam in Pakistan is different. And now I'm like, it's just not, it's just not one. Everyone has a, their own school of thought in certain ways. And this is what I think like now. And when I, when I read and read and read more about it, and now I hear more people talking about it, now I understand that why is this so fake? And why 28 years of my life, I was in that stupidity not realizing what I was doing. The Lord give you mercy and he saved you. Now, don't worry about the past. By the way, forget the past. Look at the future. Walk with oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. By the way, here's the link from Sheikh Asim. It's actually 17 minutes. This is a long version. The other one was a 10-minute response from someone else. But that's the one. This is the one, the long version. It's about 17 minutes where he has to refute the objections against him that he said, you know, you can eat McDonald's. But brother, don't worry about the past. Focus on the future. And not only Islam, but sadly in Christianity, we have many sects and sub-sects. May God guide us to the fullness of the truth and give us the power to glorify Jesus Christ and walk worthy of the Lord and obey him and practice what we preach. And may the Lord Jesus save me from my own sin, wickedness, hypocrisy, that I'm not a hypocrite, but I glorify Jesus Christ and be a doer of his word. So, brother, you're on a good path. The Lord is working on you. But remain humble and teachable. Thank and you. as when you get old like me, if the Lord tarries, 
then you're going to be just as impatient as me and you're going to lose your anger more often like me and you're going to block a lot more people. In fact, I have more people on my block list than subscribers. I have about 10 million blocked people. That would have been 10 million subscribers. <laughs> just kidding, but no, I do. But any other questions or are we done, brother? Uh, no, we're done. And is Adam Seeker, is he Pakistani? Yeah, Adam Seeker. Maybe he'll have you come on. Adam Seeker. Find him on Skype. He is Pakistani, convert from Islam. He now follows the Lord Jesus Christ. He has Adam Seeker Urdu, where on Saturday he gets about 12,000 people from India and Pakistan watching him live because they discuss in Urdu and Punjabi and whatever it is. He's getting so famous that he doesn't respond to me. I had sent him some requests. It's been three weeks, but now he's big time, and I am nothing but, you know, small fry, so he can ignore me all he wants. See, here he is. He needs attention. You need attention? No. Take me after the life. Remove me. I want to remove <laughs> you permanently from social media. <laughs> okay. Okay, why don't you get a hold of his brother and bring him on? He's a Pakistani yeah. who now follows Jesus Christ. That's why I'll speak with him after life, so once you finish. All right. So you guys... I'm going to have to wrap it up because I go live in an hour. This was impromptu. So I'm going to be back in an hour. I'm going to do a debate review, David Wood and Kenny Bomber, God willing, and then I'll open up the Q&A. So you guys that were complaining, like some guy was saying, oh, does Adam Seeker, not Adam Seeker. I'm sorry. I don't mean to insult you. You're better looking than him. No, you're real. Francis, you are better looking than him. Believe me. But anyway, uh, so does uh, Francis take an hour to ask questions? He can take three hours if he wants. The guy's a convert. He's a babe. But one day he's going to blow up like Adam Seeker and then he's not going to know me anymore and won't give me the time of day. By the way, in your last stream, how many did you have, Adam? Uh, 10,400. Say it again. 10,400. And I got to flag your YouTube channel. I got to get you shut down. <laughs> Muslims are already doing that, brother. You don't have to follow man, the path of the Muslims. Man, I can't even get 200, man. Who, who the heck do you think you are, bro? Um... But by the way, if you want, send him your skype name on private chat for francis brother you have yeah you have a lot of other kind of people in the backstage that's why i said once you end the live stream i will speak with him okay but i gotta talk to jamie though so you guys are gonna go in the back wait in the back don't go anywhere yes, jamie sir. says she's new so i don't know if she's a fake or she's real as a troll pretending to be but let me just put you guys in the back for a second but just uh just to say thank you so much again sir yes, very sir, kind of you and thank you god bless you for all the answers and I've learned a lot today. Thank you again. Thank you for your questions because we all learned by the grace of God. Amen. So, Lord, just stick in the back. Don't go anywhere yet. Don't leave yet. Because uh, when I shut down, I'll bring you back up. But let me just see if Jamie's sincere because she says she's new. Let's see. So let me do this. Hold on. I think she's a fake, but we'll see. Can I help you, Jamie? Are you there? Jamie, you got five seconds. Five. Four. Hey, hey, no, no, I'm actually a dude. Yeah, I'm actually. Oh, I'm a dude. sorry, sorry man. The name that. Jamie. Jay, don't hello, tell me who hello, to debate, who not to debate, me. man. Hold on one second, brother. One second. Jay, don't yeah, tell hey, me who to debate, good, who not to debate. Not... Jamie, be one second, dude. I'm talking to somebody else. Wait. Jay Gonzalez, don't tell me who to debate, who not to debate, man. I'm not. You're dim me to tell me who to debate. You want someone to debate? Go debate him. The guy's telling me back. And what's up, Jamie? What do you need? Jamie, what do you need? Okay. Jamie, Jamie here. Here go. Here go, Jamie. Enjoy it. Okay. All right, guys. See you in an hour, Lord willing. We had a good crowd today. We had almost 600. Kitty Layson, every one of you, an hour. I'm going to continue my de debate review, Lord willing. David Wood and Kenny Bomber, Lord willing, and Q&A, if the Lord wills. So keep praying for me. Pray for my health and holiness and purity. Walk worthy of Jesus and my daughters. The Lord keep them healthy and strong and bring them to me. And they love Jesus Christ. And if the Lord tarries, I die in their arms. In Jesus' name. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care. Lord be with you. Now, Francis and Adam, don't go anywhere yet. See you now, God willing.